to me, to you, to me, to me, that's it, to me, that's the one, there you go, oh, hello, how are you doing, it's a big one, I have a big one, I've got a big one here, look, let's get it open, it's Uber Sensortronic, Total System 500 cylinder vacuum cleaner made in France, I'm not expecting good things from this unboxing. I bought it and thought I'll probably regret this. It's going to cost me money to get it working and there's some parts I can't buy anymore at all. But anyway, let's see what we've got. I can already see the extension tube sticking out. It doesn't bode well but hopefully the machine itself has been well wrapped to protect it from being thrown around a Hermes van. There we are, I think that's a little bit better. We can see this is a big one, it's a big one. Right, let me just... Two boxes seem to have been joined in the middle, so... Let's have a look. When this was a new vacuum available in the shops, the box wouldn't have been anywhere near this size, but I expect this is all that the seller could cobble together as long as it's um, in one piece, well it won't be in one piece, I know it won't be, there's, um, I'm going to need to get probably, well I think definitely, a new hose for this. Now there are a couple of people that I might be able to get a hose from, but if I can't get a hose from uh, two, two fellow collectors, it means paying full retail for a new hose which is well over £100. There's another part that needs replacing on this, I think, the lid that covers the tool compartment. Unfortunately, that is not available from the searches I've done. I don't know if anything's glueable or fixable, but anyway. Oh, this is going to take a while. If you need to go to the lavatory, do so now. Oh no, my, oh, oh no, why have you done that, you stupid, stupid little boy? And I'm not talking about me, I'm not a stupid little boy. The instruction book, it's a good job I spotted that, phew, that almost got ripped to shreds. There's the instruction book, covers Sensatronics 100 to 500. The date is 1988. I believe I got my first Sensortronic in 1989, my, well, my first Sensortronic of that shape. In fact, you can actually see me unboxing that in 1989. I'll put a link on this video if you want to see me unboxing my talking Sensortronic. Naturally, that's long gone. Actually, that was one of the last to go when I had my cull. It was one I kept and I foolishly sold it, but anyway. Okay, I really need someone else to pull it like, like a cracker. Let's hope it won't go bang, eh? <laughs> well, it's not going to go anything because it's not going to turn on. Because without a functioning hose, this machine won't switch on because the, the hose has the power connector, uh, the on-off switch, etc. as rusted as... Right, I'm not sh In there's probably all the bits from the hose. I expect. Oh. Now why, oh why... Oops! Why, why send it like that? Why send the tube like that? I can't understand that. Rusted to a buggery, as they say. Um, most of that should come off with a bit of decent metal polish. I had um, unboxed a Sebo C3 Power hand rust, um, and I man managed probably about as much rust as this one. It's a bit hard to tell, possibly. It should, most of that should come off. So there are the two extension tubes. They never had, in the, in the UK versions, they never offered a telescopic extension tube on these Sensortronics. I believe though, on the Continental versions, oh, it's, uh, oh, 
you know, I'm glad I only paid, I mean, when this, this has been on eBay for a while, and it, it started off at a ridiculous price, and I thought, well, I'm tempted, but I knew how much it would cost to fix. I'm glad I didn't pay, I mean, that, pretty bad that is. I love this um, turbo head, turbo 300 head. <sighs> That's going to need some work. Um, when I first got cleaners with this head, it was far better than the electrokinetic head that came before, in my opinion. I had, um, I, had, I had this model that I'm opening. I had System 400, which also had this head. I also had a compact um, electronic total system. And you can see a little clip of that as well on my channel. I had that with the turbo head, turbo 300. Very nice. I liked this power head. So that's the power head. Pretty poor. There's the cleaner. And inside here we have nothing. Now isn't that beautiful? Look at oh, if only if only I'd got that. Look at that. Look at that lovely, lovely lighthouse you can put in your garden. It's solar powered, is it? No wiring required. Is it solar? It says solar living. Light and motion lighthouse. That's, my, oh, look, B&M. That's one store I don't tend to frequent. I've been in there a few times, you know, just for research purposes. And I, I had to really dress down. You know, I had to put some really old, well, I had to put my decorating clothes on, you know. They were all stained with paint and ripped and stunk. Uh, and I felt at home then, um, although I was still overdressed for B&M. <laughs> oh, Roger, you're such a snob. Yes, I know I am. Right, let's have a look in this uh, shoe box. Oh, it's the hose. I am due to go to the uh, local refuse tip tomorrow, which is good, because uh, I'll need to. Now this has been absolutely, abs I mean this is not salvageable, I wouldn't have thought. So at least it's in better, it's in, well he's, he's sort of put it back together. Absolutely kaput. The hose itself though is okay and I might, because I have, some of you have seen my videos from up from old. I did unbox the Sensotronic System 55 with a, a hose which was knackered on that, completely ruined. I wonder if maybe a way of using this hose, I don't know. It's yes, it's absolutely, completely not salvageable, there's bits missing. This is the remote, oh, I can just picture when I had this from you, I had these from you, lovely. I love this. This, oh, I just, when I first saw pictures of this, I just got the brochures and thought, oh, isn't that fantastic? Much better design than the first remote control on the first generation Sensortronics. Anyway, I'll show you what's what, but it's not going to obviously work. There's the on off switch. Under there is the, can we see it? Power takeoff socket under there that you plug the turbo 300 power head into. On the top you've got manual and that's not moving, an automatic mode. You've got the red sensor light which um, flashed when the light on the machine flashed so it would flash in the case of a blockage or the bag was full or any, anything else that um, it would flash for or if the bag's not fitted correctly. And you've got a plus and minus button to vary the power and a boost button to boost it, which was a temporary boost. It would boost it to 120% suction, but only for maybe 20 seconds, and then it would go back down to whatever setting you had it on. And then you had to wait a while for it to build up the power or something, and then you could use boost again. But that, um, the hose is in good condition, but obviously this is not going to work. And I don't know where, if at all, I mean, look at that, it's just, I don't know what he's been trying to do with that, but that's just completely, I'll keep it for spares, but obviously 
absolutely useless that, but I expected it, I expected it. Right. Oh, for some reason, for some reason we've got a lot of rice, perhaps a uh, lot of rice there, look. Maybe in case the Sensotronic got peckish. It's in far worse condition than it looked, well the pictures, you can never go by the pictures, obviously that's broken. You can never go by the pictures on eBay, unless they take, oh. Oh well, I'll be vacuuming up all this rice later. I've also got a lovely box for some scales. I don't think there's anything else. Oh, what's this? Oh, these are... Asda. La 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 la. These are the other bits that belong on the hose. Hearing me. I'll get this looking better than it's looking now. But a lot of the, if I could replace some of the, the external parts, if they were still available, that's what I'd be thinking of doing, but they're not. A lot of these aren't available. Let's have a look at the, it's a heavy, it's a heavy, that's not, probably not so bad when I look at it now. I think it's going to, um, Auto Glim Car Polish is marvellous for um, helping to disguise bits and bobs. There we go, that's the rating thing. I can't see it. It'll be French, made in France. Um, Hoover Model S3730, made in France, trademark marks of Hoover PLC, 1200. Oh, is that all there were? 1200 watts. Um, Serial number with uh, 906-00099. Hmm. This could be 1989 model, possibly, I don't know. Um, so, you've got two swivel casters, two wheels. They look okay. I think most of this, it will, um, that's the exhaust vent either side, instead of being at the back, like on the previous Sensortronics. And at the back we've got nothing. Actually, no, looking at it now, it isn't as bad. It's not bad at all. This will polish up. It's got the original tools. You've got your all-purpose nozzle, crevice nozzle. And the dusting brush. That seems to be all original from what I remember. Obviously that's broken, there would have been a spring here. That's interesting, let's see, ah, so it's an early one. I'll tell you why it's an early one. Ooh. This panel here covers, this is probably the thing that's in the work, that's, I would have loved to replace that. I'll have another look. Um, I did look initially, I can probably polish that up. The early Sensortronics of this style had a textured panel like this does, a textured panel here that you pressed in order, when it does work, I'm just about to see, when it does work, when it should, when it would have worked, when it had a spring in it, you'd have pressed down that textured panel and then this, <laughs> there we are, that should, that should pop up like that. You can see a sort of funny little video I did of my talking Sensortronic and I think I show you it popping it up. Later models, because it was a bit, it was a little bit temperamental on, on the ones I had with the textured panel. In fact, all the Sensortronics of this style that I owned had this sort, because I bought them all, all quite early on in the run when I had them. But they did change this and it became more of a button that you pressed in. So it was actually a movable thing, instead of just a textured panel, it was actually a movable independent button. 
So they must have had problems with that because sometimes you had to press it and it wouldn't pop up. So I'll leave that to one side. So it's an early one. My very, very favourite Sensatronic. It wasn't even the talking one and it wasn't a remote controlled one. It was the System 400. I just really, it had a touch button, um, a pedal on the thing to control the suction. Actually, before I show you inside, let's show you the, the control panel. That's your auto cord rewind course. That's your on off. Oh, it's not. I tell a lie. It would have been your on off with on non remote control models. That's just a blank piece. On the audio model, the talking model, there would have been a little speaker grill there, and the speaker was behind there. This is your bag check light. Basically, when the machine was on, you'd press that in and an indicator would show how full the bag was as a percentage, never very accurate. Remote control, obviously, and you've got plus uh, sensors. Um, green light when it's working efficiently, the red light would come on if it was blocked or the bag's full, etc. So there we have it, there's the, the back. So yes, all in all, actually, the things that are wrong with it, I knew that would be wrong with the machine, are the hose and the tool lid. I'm not sure if that was even mentioned actually, the tool lid in the thing. But anyway, press this button at the front. Oh yeah, you got your little bit Hoover logo there. Press this button at the front. And out comes some more rice. Now this, a filter has been put in here, but when these were brand new models, a filter was never actually provided not for this generation this isn't the correct well it might be I don't know as you can see there's a little thing if you can't see it from there I'll read it it says this filter should be brushed after each bag change replaced after every three bag changes and that's pointing to the pre-motor filter but on all the earlier boxy sensortronics there was no, the, the, the grill was there, but there was no other filter. Um, but there were some later Sensatronics when they, they sort of dropped the whole range and they brought out sort of they, one in white. Can't remember the model number. Um, they brought out a white one, and I think that did have an extra filter. So I can, get a, I can get a proper filter that will fit that, and I probably will do. Who knows? Here's a genuine bag. This may be where the rice has come from. Reusable, fits the Alpina as well. Compact Elite Vogue Aria, Alpina and Sensortronics. So you've got the uh, slide off clip. H7 Plus. That's probably where all the rice has come from. There's a little device down here, so I can't close the door without the bag fitted correctly. On the talking models there was a little magnet here and that um, would make contact with the sensor so if I was to on the talking version if I was to try and use it without a bag or the bag not fitted the machine would say bag is not correctly fitted after playing a little bing bong no it went bing bong bing. I don't know how it went you can see it talking on my older video I'll get, um, I'll get some new ones, that's the uh, pre-motor filter. Big hefty tanks, these cleaners. But then, when you look at other cleaners of the time, there were a lot, I've got, um, I unboxed on my channel, again you can look if you want. That didn't end very well, but I unboxed an AEG Autotronic, and that absolutely massive cleaner from the 80s. But I, I did prefer this style of cleaner to, I don't know, I just... It's very boxy, very boxy. I think the 80s had, had a period of having very boxy... If you look at cars from the 80s, I think a lot of those look quite boxy. And then, I don't know when, there's, I know there's people out there who like cars, and um, 80s cars especially. But I seem to remember that there was a lot in a certain part of the 80s, a lot of very boxy looking cars, and then 
curves started to appear, like um, the first sort of curvy car I remember was the Ford Sierra. And then vacuum cleaners started getting a bit curvier. So there's a lot of work to do on this. I can test, I've got a Hoover Alpina with a power takeoff socket, so I can test the Turbo 300 head. With any luck, because that is, the, the letter, lettering on this is pretty worn, I may be able to get some cosmetic parts for this. This will cost me quite a lot of money to get how I want it to look. Fortunately, a lot of it is okay, but some of it is not what I'd expect. Obviously, it's never going to be as new looking as it would have been when it came out of the box. And it would, it's never going to be as good as the ones I had, but anyway. So, that's all I can show you for today. So it is a, a, it's another one of my projects, I've got a lot of things to do. Um, just bought a lot of vacuums that need work doing and I just haven't had the time <laughs> to actually do them. I wonder if the Flexi Wind is okay. Always on Hoover, Hoover cylinders, the Flexi Wind is rather sluggish. I've, you know, never really found any that were very, very good at rewinding the flex. But everything, you know, if I could have replaced that, I would be, if I can find a new top tool cover, correct colour, that would be fantastic, but I don't think, I'm not banking on it. But everything else I think will clean up well. <laughs> Come on, it's alright, you don't have to be frightened of me, I'll look after you. You, you don't worry yourself. Oops, says he, knocking the plug into the wall. This wouldn't have had a fitted plug. Not, not back in the day. It's got a nice, uh, at least it's got a nice black plug to sort of coordinate a bit, sort of hides it a bit. It's sluggish. It's, it's just going to need a lot of TLC, a bit of money spent on it. But I'm really pleased that finally I've got Sensitronic back in my collection, a boxy Sensitronic. So, obviously, if I do get this working, you will see a proper demo of it. I'll just have to get onto uh, Facebook now and um, message the couple of uh, Facebook friends who've offered me hoses. Hopefully, they'll be able to find one and then I can at least see if it works. I believe it should work. I'm very impressed with the condition of it, to be honest. Now I've looked at it, now I've got over the initial shock of the packaging. And of course, this part isn't very, the Turbo 300 head isn't very good. But anyway, there we go, that's the Hoover Sensitronic System 500. If I put it up on its end, it might... Yeah, see, that's what happens. Lovely cleaners. Very much of their time. And if I was to compare this to one of my modern vacuums now, say my SIBO K3 Premium, I would think, crikey, that's... Oh, in fact, speak of the devil, come on. Let me just... I've got this, uh, Come on. Come on. I'm not sure whether you've seen this yet. Depends. I think you will have seen this by now. My little K3. Lovely, lovely vacuum. There we go. Let's... Let the French vacuum meet the German vacuum. What a difference. I know which one I prefer to use, but for nostalgia reasons, I'm glad to have this one. Right, that's your lot for this unboxing. Please stay tuned because obviously, apart from unboxings, there'll be a lot more demos of various other vacuum cleaners, other floor care appliances for you. Please thumb me up. Please like the video, please subscribe, please share the video, please comment as well, as long as it's something nice. You can ask me questions, I can't, I can't guarantee I'll know all the answers, but 
often somebody reading the thread might be able to answer you if I can't. So there we go. Pretty pleased to finally have a Sensotronic again. So until the next time, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you very soon.